Greetings, friend. I will tell you three things you need to know about solving World Championship Sudoku. The last tips are most critical to solving these kinds of puzzles fast. Not only that, stay tuned to the end for my monthly community shoutouts and a special announcement. Click below if you want to give it a go. With that, it's solving time. The first thing you want to do is focus here in the middle. You probably notice there's a one in column six and column five. There's only one place left for a one here in block five. And so we can mark that. And then what you'll see is that there's an eight, nine coming across row six. So that means the eight, nine can only be in these two spots. But you also have an eight coming across row four. And so you know you can put the eight right here and you can put the nine right there. And now we only have two places left here, right? We're missing a three and a two. You can see this three coming up column five. So you know the three goes here and the two goes there. So those are all uh, hidden singles. And this is going to give me my first tip that I want to share with you with these. And the first tip is with these Sudoku Grand Prix, the puzzles typically go from easier to harder. And they give a point scale. And so the first puzzle you're going to do is going to be pretty easy. So you want to be looking for normal hidden singles, naked singles starting off, maybe some naked pairs. Uh, so that's my first tip. But we have a couple more that I'm going to share with you. So keep watching. This was a great puzzle. It took me about seven minutes, I remember. And I was excited because I was able to kind of get this part done really fast. And so now the next thing you want to do is just kind of notice we put this two and this two. There's only one place left for two here in column or block eight. So you can put the two right there. And then with this two and the two in row nine, and you have a two coming down column three, we can put a two right there. And then if you look over here at the threes, you add this three and you have the three in column five already. So there's only one place left for three up here in the block. So you can add that three right there. And now we're going to get to some uh, neat solving here that I really wanted to point out to you. And this is kind of the, the second uh, tip I want to give you. Second tip is you're, you're only going to need minimal marking required for these classic Sudokus. When you get to the variants, you might need a little bit more. But in the Sudoku Grand Prix, Snyder notation is usually enough. If you're marking pairs and maybe triples, that's all you need. Uh, what I can show you, too, is if you use your muscle memory, you're going to be able to remember uh, quite a bit of these numbers anyway. So like, let's look right here. We have a 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. So that means we need a 4, 8, 9 right there. And I'll just kind of highlight that. So this is a naked triple. It's also a locked triple because not only is it in the column, it's also locks the block. And since you have a 9 and a 4 right here, we know we can solve this for an 8. And so this leaves a 4 and a 9 right there. But what it also tells us, since this is a 4 and a 9, this is going to be a 5 or a 7. So you got this 5 here. You can actually solve that for the 5 and solve that for a 7. So we can use all that information to fill in these spots here. I'll get rid of the mark, uh, the coloring. And then you want to kind of move up and kind of do the same thing up here right so now we only have a, a naked pair left so what are we missing we're missing a four and we're missing a six well i see the four in row one so here's my four and as soon as i get out of that color mode i'll put the four in all right and then here is your six and so leaves us another naked triple right here and you're probably already noticing pretty quick that you have a seven in row one and two i'm just going to use that peripheral vision and go, okay, this has to be my seven. What's left is an eight, nine, which we don't have across rows one and two. So we'll come back to that. But you can see how quickly you can start solving because your goal really is to start creating like a mass of cells that are solved. Because the more cells you put in here, the easier it is to solve because you're giving yourself more clues along the way to solve these puzzles. And this puzzle, it kind of reminds me of another World Champion Sudoku that I solved. I'll put a link to that at the end. You will want to check it out. You probably haven't seen that video before. So what we want to do is focus on where there's, you know, the greatest restriction, two, three, maybe four cells are in. So let's go across row four here. We have this great pattern that pops up again and again that you help you solve three cells at one time. You notice there's a five and a seven right here. And then one of these candidates is repeated in the other empty cell. So there's another five right there. What does that tell us? It tells us we can solve all three cells, right? Because... This cell has to be a two, it can't be a five or a seven. This cell has to be a seven, and this last cell will have to be that five. Whenever you see this, just solve all three of those cells right away. All right. And then now you can kind of use this to go down here, and let's look across row six. What you'll notice is we're missing a one, four, and six, but we have a four, a six here in the block. We have a four peeking into it. And this is something I'm going to show you a little bit more in my next video but but what you can see is okay a six and a four means this has to be your one 
And since the six is right there, this has to be your four, and then we can solve this last cell for the six. So again, we just solved three cells very quickly by, um, by just kind of paying attention to what givens we're feeding into those blocks. And whenever you fill something out like that, now you want to kind of look and see what does that give you. So we're looking here, we need a three, seven, and nine. Well, I got a seven and a nine in column two, so this has to be a three. And now we have this three, this three in column three. There's only one place left for three here in block seven. And then with this three here in row eight, there's only one place left for a three in block nine, which is right here. And now we can follow it up to this three in column eight to go with column nine. You have the two threes here. We can solve all of the threes. And that's just cross hatching. So that's looking for hidden singles. It's the quickest way to solve. So you kind of want to bounce between the two, uh, you know, between those strategies, and you'll get some quick solves knocked out. Now, what you want to do, let's look down here in row nine. Okay, in row nine, we're missing three candidates again. So I'm always going to look, hey, what three candidates? And since we saw this three here and here, it kind of helps us out. We're looking for a six. It looks like an eight and a nine. Well, I have the nine right here and can't be in those two spots. So this has to be your nine, which immediately allows us to solve up here for that four. Because remember, there was a four and a nine missing. And then now we look here and we're looking for an eight and a six. Well, I have a six in column three. So here's your six and here's your eight. So we're able to knock all that out. And now we can kind of focus here on block seven. And this is what I've seen the champion solvers do. They kind of solve in chunks, right? They solve in chunks of the puzzle. So they you, you, put, a, you put a lot of candidates in one spot, and now you want to finish it out. With this five cutting across, we know there's only one place left for five in block seven. And we don't see a two in here, but there's a two in column, excuse me, we have a two. We don't see is a one or a seven, but we have a seven right there. So here's your seven, and there's your one. Nice. And now with these two ones, we can solve this for a one, and now what you see is we have a full house. So there's only one camera, I mean, we know we can solve not only this cell, but this cell as well. This has to be your nine, and then this has to be your seven, because that was part of that three, seven, nine that we had talked about before. I love it. Okay, let's look across here. We only have two candidates remaining. We're missing a one, and we're missing a seven. Again, the seven's coming through. I don't see a lot of ones given, so we're going to rely on other candidates to kind of help us solve those ones. So that has to be your seven. That has to be your one. And if you'll notice right here, this is a six, eight, nine. This is a six, eight, nine. Uh, but there's no other repeats up here. And so we're not going to be able to solve that right away. So you can just put that in your mental memory and think about it. But what I will do is I'll give you the last tip, right? I said there's going to be three things you need to know. The third thing you need to know is that with these classic Adokus, you're not going to need more than the top seven strategies. So the top seven strategies, hidden single, naked single, naked pair, hidden pair, claiming pair, pointing pair, and naked triple. And you notice we haven't even used really any pointing or claiming pairs or even hidden pairs. You will use those in the harder puzzles, you know, usually the fifth or sixth puzzle, you're gonna need some more of that. And that's where it's important to actually do some marks of those pairs and triples. But with this one, with this naked triple, all we need to do is be able to solve one of these other digits up here somewhere, and we will be able to solve all three of these cells. So let's keep that in mind as we move our way up the puzzle. Uh, okay. Let's go right here. What do you need here? A one, two, and a four. Well, I got a one and a two right here. So this has to be your four. We can't do the one or two just yet, but we did add another digit, which is great. And if you're just not familiar with those seven strategies I just talked about, I just came out with a free Sudoku solving guide. Check out the description, the pinned comment below. Check it out. Click on there. Get it absolutely free. It'll help you solve hard Sudoku like these World Championship, New York Times hard. You will love it. And so what you can do is kind of start looking at these fours, right? We got a four here in row one, row three. You got this four coming up on one. So there's only one place left for a four right there. And now you see how this eight comes up here. We can solve this cell for an eight. Nice. And so this kind of leaves us with this five, six, nine. Can't solve that naked triple just yet, but we gave ourselves some more restriction across here, right? And so what we're looking across here, we're looking for a six, eight, nine. I see an eight in column nine. I see an eight in column one. This has to be your eight, which means this has to be your nine to finish this block. Awesome. And now uh, we can do some more solving, right? And so we're looking at what's across the top here. Uh, we're missing a one, we're missing a five, and we're missing an eight. Well, I see there's a one already in this block, so that can't be a one or an eight. So that's got to be your five. And then you see this one coming right here. It means this has to be your one. And then so this is going to be your eight. Nice. And now we know there's no one right here, right? 
one, two, four. I got this one. So we come back to and go, this is a two, this is a one. And you remember what I said, if we just solve one of these six, eight, nine, we can solve all three of these cells again. So we did, we got this eight right here. So this eight and six means this has to be a nine. And with the eight right there means this has to be your eight and that's gonna be your six. I love how that works. And now we're getting really close to the end here, right? Because what do we need left? We got two cells remaining here. We're looking for a two and we're looking for a nine. I got my two. So here's your two and there's your nine. And you remember this is a five, six, nine. So we got the six here and this is your nine. And hey, stay stay tuned. I still got my big announcement. We're right getting close to that, right? So I hope you, you've been here watching this the whole time. While you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies and you will solve Sudoku even better. What's our last two digits? Okay, I don't see a six in block three. So this has got to be your six and the last digit is a five. It's time for my community shout outs. First, a big shout out to my new Smarty Party member, Yoshi Baroshi. Second, I want to thank Philip Bloom, aka Glum Hippo, for buying me coffees. I really appreciate it. Third, I want to give a special shout out to John Brown and Yoshi Baroshi for giving the correct solution to March's reward puzzle pack done by Rock Rat Zero. It was awesome. My April report pack, and this is my special announcement for members only, it's coming out April 1st. DJV created it. You're going to have to see how fantastic it looks and how awesome these originally themed puzzles are. Join the Smarty Party now by clicking on the membership link in the description, and you won't miss out on any of this great exclusive content. Thank you so much to my current and future Smarty Party members for watching and for your support.